Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. This is uh, tutorial number uh, tutorial series number 3 here in um, Harlequin's Code regarding this uh, TS Notify uh, uh, software guys that we're about to uh, create using this uh, Golang programming language. And uh, right now, uh, we are continuing uh, this uh, config.yaml file. So we only need to use only one, either one of these guys, either SMTP or the SendGrid uh, API key. Um, you can enhance this as always, guys. You can you can have all these things. Uh, this is the classic SMTP. This is always uh, present there. Then uh, SendGrid or Mailgun or something, whatever the new in the future, guys. Then you can just uh, create a new settings here, configurable variables like this, this pattern like the send grid or uh, another one below will be the mail gun or whatsoever guys then you can use all all of these settings here right? but for uh, right now uh, we will use send grid since i uh, have this send grid here but you can play around with your uh, gmail also guys but gmail is not recommended guys because this is only um, the emails per day maybe now we're very strict guys for the gmail things so you can just uh, use the send grid. Uh, this one is 100 uh, emails per day. So it's a uh, decent enough for a free version. So you can have and go ahead and uh, uh, get the API key there. So right now we continue on the config YAML file guys. So config.yaml file. So we can uh, uh, straight away go to our root.go after this. So it's probably we need to uh also this one guys is we need to encrypt later on the send grid uh, api key starts with sg or something guys then you can uh play around uh, right now we don't we don't key in yet um okay later we will supply all these things uh, but before we supply we this one these are all the very sensitive information here as i've told you earlier also this one also the username and the password all these things guys so we need to be very careful here uh, we need to uh, in uh, what do you call encrypt this uh, early on i have that uh, encryption that so we can use that and then um, this one also the api key here so we continue guys so right now we need to have a logging also uh, this one also is uh, important guys because this one some some countries like uh, uh, like in other country, you know, US uh, style or a British style of uh, what I call the daytime format, then uh, you have this option here. So we just add on all this daytime format for the logging, guys. So in Go, we need to have a fixed uh, date as a what do you call as a as a daytime format, guys. So this one we need to. Uh, this is the exact time, also, guys. 0 5 p.m. So that means we need to use uh, a date here first. Then after that, uh, then the month. You can also have this uh, full month name, or you can have the short full for uh, short name here also, short month name. So right now we need to uh, this one also need to tab no. Uh, here we need to enable uh, another option guys is to enable true or it's up to you guys uh, which which one uh, you want to enable either one also we need to block this also later on guys so another format here is a daytime format uh, we need to have another type like in the US style something uh, 2006 03 same time guys same time it's up it's up to you if you want um military time or 24 hours time 24 hours format then you can have all these things guys but uh, right now i set all these things as a 12 hour format so again we need to enable here enable this one is uh, false it's up it's up to you guys okay and then uh, i need to have we need to supply all this information here guys so right now i need to have a default also guys uh, then the tab this default will be our email 
So like a uh, uh, for example Maharlikans code at uh, gmail.com. This is your from email guys. And then your subject or the email notification like uh, task uh, task scheduler status alert. Okay. Then the status here. Um this status case we need to have something like uh, because in our TS notify we need to have two methods of capturing all this uh, information here this uh, logging I mean uh, this one uh, if, if you have this uh, warning 322 or something all these are uh, what do you call oh, this one is on the event ID guys this is our uh, last one uh, last uh, method this is the second method that we are about to get it's uh, we will be, we will be basing on the event ID another one is uh, based on the most common for example this is our go copy here this is a ready the this is what I, this is what it means guys the status here uh, if someone say like if they disable this as you can see if someone is disabling this now the status is disabled uh, we need to capture also we need to auto notify us uh, because if this has been disabled then it's very critical application if someone play around and then then disabled so no worries guys this will auto notify our based on our TS notify uh, program so uh, if someone disabled then automatically in real time in just a millisecond delay then it will uh, capture all this uh, thing then it will email to us and then we can be able to receive an email so this is the thing guys so what what we're going to do now is uh this is the the status one of the first method guys to capture but it's up to you which which one which method you want to implement so uh, at this point i need to put something like a uh, uh, what do you call this uh, the common status here guys so what I'm going to do is uh, like a fail or warning it's up to you guys you can remove all these things later like here also is disabled you can put also ready but this one will definitely will auto keep sending you you always receive uh, email <laughs> notification but every time it's running also if you want to capture already uh, all the standard uh, all the standard status here thrown by the task scheduler guys then you can you can all have this or or running or something like this if I enable back then it will uh, send again the email notification then if you want to run this like this one is running now the status then it will uh, it's up to you if you want to capture this running also uh okay guys so uh, if you want to refresh there are two methods here uh as you can see there is another one there is a logging here if you enable the windows task scheduler logging uh definitely there is a 102 event id this one also we can capture by the second method which is the based on the event id that we want to trigger like if you want to trigger the 102 for this task item then uh, um definitely we can uh the, the ts notify will send us an email so there are there are two methods guys so now we want to go back here this thing is uh is a running ready but we don't we don't need these guys because this one will out keep sending us then our hundred per day will be when we finish <laughs> will be done <laughs> okay so we continue uh here is a monitor task okay so we need to have this another okay it's a tab we need to tab also here yeah must be tab done guys okay okay then uh, another one is the monitor task and then uh, we have two here also guys so the first method and the second method so the first method should be uh, we need the task name guys these are all the uh, thing 
like for example in our case here is uh, we have this uh, go copy md actually we don't need this in uh, because this is a go program in our previous discussion but uh, i just want to have uh, some sample and demo here you need to capture the exact name here guys um, you copy this uh, name uh, okay and then i close then i put back then the name should be here this name task name will be used uh, when, uh, when will be used to send an email guys then there is a task name in the details all these things then we can uh, uh, we can have this information uh, then the recipients guys uh, recipients these are all array also for example um, for example I have something like uh, I want I want to receive an email from uh, from uh, one of my email address. Uh, okay, then you put comma there. Then for example, support at uh, ipaskill.com. For example, guys, these are all my emails here. And then uh, and then the what do you call another one? You just copy this, guys. If you do, uh, so <laughs> need to be. <laughs> Not to me. <laughs> uh, always type me. <laughs> okay, guys. So, if you want, we can try another uh, any existing here. Hold on. Uh, we'll try this Nitro Sense, guys. Uh, this is my laptop here. Okay, I try Nitro Sense. Nitro Sense. So I will give a try this Nitro Sense. Nitro Sense. So at uh, this time I will just uh, receive email from from my another email or any email that you want to put there in the under the recipients there. This monitored task will be used like uh, this this one guys. This is for the fail warning and the disabled one. This is not the event ID based um, notifier here. We just follow uh, based on whatever the the status will be thrown. For example, this Nitro Sense or my Go Copy here, whatever is the status there. If someone disabled, this is the the status here, guys. This is what it means here. Not the event ID. The event ID is uh, one zero two. All these things, it will be thrown. So the event ID is more detailed, guys. This one is more on a, a generic kind of thing. Uh, is a generic information here like someone is like running disabled uh, enabled fail warning or queue or queued something then um, you can have but uh, here also the method number two for this uh, for us to capture is uh, here is more detailed here uh, because um, this one we can uh, capture this uh, event based on the event ID so okay guys we will continue okay so this is for the monitored task you can you can rename whatever you want guys but uh, I, I like to name it another one is the this one uh, monitored events this is what i mean for the what i call the event id guys so we want the event id here like um like uh, we need to have the event ID like uh, 104 or in this case uh, in our demo here is um, maybe we can capture 102 or 201 it's up to you guys uh, any warning because I don't have the warnings here you can play around with your PC or one of your servers there if you're working in, the, in your company so okay so uh, I will give a try this 102 guys so uh, then we will play around we will try to run this every one minute then we will we will monitor okay guys so uh, 102 I'll try 102 this is the success uh, event then I need the recipients again I just copy here okay recipients again I need to receive two emails it's up to you guys here is uh, it's up to you unlimited here unlimited 
another one is um, the most critical guys is for event id uh what do you call i copy again huh? hold on just hold on guys this one is uh 104 mm, okay uh, and then another one is uh, uh another event id is a uh, 325 uh i will explain a bit this one is um the uh, 325 event id uh this event id here guys this event id for example 322 or something that the 325 is um, most common errors for uh queuing up uh your thing for example this is the thing guys uh, i want to highlight to you this one this is the queued status guys this is the exact uh, error message thrown in the event into the event here uh, the task category here should be the queued this means that the queued is a uh, is a preload to 104 this 104 is uh, this is a log on uh, failure guys so what it means is um, before prior to this one uh, prior to the event id 104 it will it will have this warning message here saying this 325 will be uh, this will always uh, the task scheduler they always try to run again uh, if, if you miss if, if they miss this uh, uh, task scheduler here if for example this one has been um, missed for something like uh, the associated account for this for example guys i uh, just want to show you uh, what i mean for the 30325 is like for example is my um, this is my laptop here uh, if you have a windows account like uh, always change the password every three months or um, it's up to your network or your corporate guys uh, if you have a very strict uh, network uh, protocols there or something in your organization it will always uh, reset the password or force the user to uh, reset or change the password every three months it's up to you guys it's up to your um, uh, organization but this one is uh, always uh, change uh, if one of your administrator or if you don't have the systems account or the service service account that the, the password may, may never be expired then the network administrator set this as an as a, what you call the password is not expirable or something then it's then probably it's fine but uh the thing is if you want to uh change this password and then you forgot then there is a three three two five event id will be thrown here the three two five will be executed here for example this will be thrown here guys uh for this task the 325 is uh what i call is a queued now it's queuing if 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 this uh, task item is always uh, i mean the interval to execute this program is every is a very frequent one for example every one minute then it will it will capture like uh it will be executed uh, after a, uh, after a few seconds or or something like that then the the task scheduler will try again it will be in the queued status it will be in the queued status here there will be a queued status here then the 325 error uh, event id will be thrown if still cannot then uh, the the error message will be escalated to a critical error which is a red color here or something like saying like critical but then there is a red icon there. and with the x or uh, something icon and then the event id will be uh, 104 maybe really. so the 104 uh, this 104 it become a logon failure guys so that means uh, either your network uh, either your network is is down or something or your service account maybe change the password or maybe it's locked 
but we do not know. As long as he cannot access to the to that account, so it's it's a two things only, guys. So this uh, this is the common errors here in uh, uh, event logs. Uh, in, uh, I mean the in the task scheduler. So the one zero four, three two five first, and then one zero four. These are all the things. So okay, okay, guys. So uh, again, this is how we done already all the configuration settings here in our test. Uh, in our config.yaml file then what we're going to do next is uh, we will create the some struct guys to capture all these uh, what do you call this uh, warning message here uh, we need to have this logo name or something or uh, i mean the task name and then the what do you call the next run all these guys uh, from here in our task scheduler so in our here uh, we need to trigger okay I, I scroll a bit these are all the some information here so what we're going to do if for example this uh, go copy here uh, okay okay so uh, i need to have this um, hold on guys so what I'm going to do guys is uh, uh, all this uh, this is our task name right and then the status and then the triggers the next run and then uh, probably the last run no need okay so right now we can uh, have all this information guys so we need to store all this information from this uh, task scheduler here I need the task name which is the go copy copy md then the status status there this is how uh, we're, we're going to have the first method guys which is uh, capturing the the real time status here uh, if somebody if, if this program runs then it's automatically running and then uh, it will then we will monitor guys so this way we will keep an eye on this item and then uh, we'll see what what is the next next run then uh, all these uh, thing guys uh, most probably this task name and the status and then the next run only then we can capture so right now we need to go to my thing here is um i need to have a struct guys uh, this is what we call sm uh what they call this one is uh this is for our monitored task guys so i just name it as a uh, standard or something like sm status um okay sm status sorry guys this one is sm status then there is a struct then we can have this uh, task name here and then the task uh, next run next run time and then the task we need also the task status status then the string there and then I, I need the recipients guys to capture all that uh, recipients emails there recipients and then I'll just uh, put this as an array of strings here and then uh, I need some status this is our internal status but I still need to make it uh, this one is a boolean so exportable guys so this is probably I need this as uh, uh, stores the email so probably we need to store the email here to for a broadcasting status guys for each um, triggered events so these are all the things here also I need uh, a map because we need to store this into the map uh, just say our key is a string and then we need to have an in empty interface here guys Inter interface oh, sorry <laughs> interface so all these things then i st here as usual guys uh, these are all our map collection type structure to format uh, accepting parameters so these are all the things guys and then uh, i also need we also need this uh, another struct here um 
this is the sms tab this is uh, the real one guys so we need to store all these things in my previous discussion we have these guys we tackled all these things we store uh, a map uh, with an interface value there so and then uh, we we store all the data there into our map and then we use that uh, what they call um uh, what do you call to encrypt the thing guys um yeah later i will i can re remind myself okay guys uh, sorry about that uh just continue status and then the map uh, string and then uh, we need a byte yeah uh, then i remember now guys this one is for our encoding and decoding for using this uh, gob encoding guys in uh, which is a built-in uh, built-in package in uh, or built-in library in golang so this is very good guys because this is very unique in go we can use this uh, gob encoding this is very uh, powerful encoding guys because this one is really fast and uh, reliable guys this is built in um, what do you call it? in golang programming uh, only you cannot find this into the other uh, programming languages or the probably they don't have us <laughs> only in golang so uh, this is very unique in golang so we need to utilize that one and very fast because this one is more on the network side we need to uh, encode the data there um, then you can have all the struct data and then you can encode it into the uh, this kind of uh, uh, encoding which is the gob encoding in uh, golang this one requires a, a byte Okay, so this one in our, in our previous discussion we have these guys so if you uh, just jump here maybe probably I recommend you to go go back to my first uh, other video there in my previous videos and getting started with Golang so you can uh, um, catch up in our discussion here but for those who are catching up then no no worries okay guys so we uh, have some uh, okay we need as usual i need to put this uh, stat stat uses the map to store in memory guys so this is in memory our program is very fast guys okay we don't need to worry about we you need a database there <laughs> this one is not applicable guys because if you <laughs> this is in real time probably if you always query to your mysql database or whatsoever database or sql server it's not uh, it's not a good way if you want to always query there then keep uh then probably your sql server might be might be hanging there or something but it's not good guys it's, it will be overloaded something so in our in this program we don't have a database but we have a, a what you call a memory database this is what they call the we're storing it in the map using this uh, gob encoding guys so this is very uh, powerful and unique in golang so uh okay uh what they call now is uh about keeping the email uh, okay uh what do you call this okay now it's a broadcasted email broadcasted guys status uh, information info here so we all this is our main database for the first method guys all these three here is for our first method this is our exact database here we store all the whatever it uh, whatever is the status here uh, for example if you have if you have hundreds or 10 items that you want to monitor here then probably you need to have uh more items also so here is 10 uh, we will be storing all these uh items from whatever it whatever you your user or you yourself or your administrator will um, want to monitor a uh, few items in your task scheduler then they can just uh, append here they can add multiple here guys so they just add and keep adding this kind of a uh, syntax here then which one do you want to monitor to send an email so um, probably this is our um uh, we'll, we'll be ending our session here guys 
so in our next schedule um, we will be continuing again guys so stay tuned for this so we will be having uh, probably we can uh, uh, try to execute or we okay we do some uh, some other things after this so stay tuned for that guys so probably we will have in our next session uh, what you call we can we can test this uh, uh, ts notify application which is the first method uh, with this uh, generic uh, kind of thing here to trace this uh, task item in our task scheduler so stay tuned for that guys uh, thank you for watching uh, my video um, if you like this uh, video you can subscribe to my channel guys and uh, um, you can have all these uh, software here softwares that we are about to share here in Marlikens code so keep watching guys and uh, uh, thank you and may god bless us all bye bye